Hi guys, just before we jump into the video, here's a brief synopsis and also a slight warning as well. For this video, I gave myself a huge challenge. I visited one of the most commonly photographed locations as a landscape photographer in the whole of Scotland, if not the UK itself. A massive undertaking. I decided to go to a honeypot location and try and take pictures that nobody else has thought about taking. That is no mean feat. That's not an easy thing to do at all. Did I succeed or not? Well, you guys, I'm sure, will let me know in the comments down below. But I certainly give it a good go, at least. Also, a bit of a heads up. This video is very noisy. Without stating the obvious, I'm very close to fast-moving water with a radio mic that's soaking wet. So please do me a favor, try your best to see through that. You'll kind of get a gist of what I'm trying to achieve within the video. But I think I did a fairly decent job. I'm sure most of you will recognize this location behind me. This is probably the most photographed location in the whole of Glencoe. As a landscape photographer, it's probably one of the most iconic spots to come to and photograph. Coming up in this video, what I'm going to try and do is give you some help, some pointers, and also some tips on how, when you guys visit honeypot locations like this, how you can attempt to make it your own. So all that's left me to say is hi guys, and welcome to this week's video. Right, so first things first, photograph honeypot locations. I don't want to go down that rabbit warren, but photograph them. I do, and I would expect you to as well, especially if this is the first time that you've ever been here. So on a location like this, you're likely to stand where I'm standing now and grab the picture of the Bucal Etiv Moor in the background with this water in the foreground, utilizing maybe the tree to the left, tree to the right, whatever, okay? Next. Go down into the water. More on that in a second, because I'll give you a bit of a unique perspective when we go down nice and low. If the water is low enough, then get down nice and low. The lower you can get, the more dynamic you'll make that waterfall seem. Right, that is the bare basics. But if you, like me, have been here several times before, as these pictures show, especially this one, which is my favorite image from this location, then it's important that you try and make this place your own. You try and look for something outside the box and you try and look for something a little bit different. So let's jump straight into it. This is my first alternative perspective, my first alternative shot of this location. Water height permitting, if you come across to where I am now, just around here and drop down here, dead easy to get to. Now we can utilize this really cool waterfall as the foreground interest, instead of what everybody else captures down here. Compositionally wise, it works a treat. Bottom right hand side foreground interest, the flowing water on the left hand side, creating a lovely frame. You've got that tree at the moment sporting those lovely yellow flowers, and of course the Buchal Etiv Moor in the background. Symmetrically, it just works an absolute dream. Mwah. What a fantastic picture! This is alternative location number one of many more. Don't go anywhere.
This next alternative location is also water height dependent. But the height of the water now is generally the height of the water when you come here. Now here's the alternative composition. Using a wide angle lens, nice and low, but try and include this rock here. There is a big rock here that most people overlook. If you include that in the frame, you'll add in another element of symmetry. So your shot here in portrait orientation is the rock, bottom left hand side of your frame. We've got the waterfall, bottom right hand side, which really is the foreground interest. We've got the tree on the left and we've got the bucolet de more in the background. They speak for themselves. If you like this composition when I show you the image in a second, it's important to note because this rock is so dominant in the frame, the eye will be drawn to it. You're going to need to make sure you focus right on that area there. Because it's so close to your camera, you'll also have to take another focus point about a third of the way into the frame, and that should do it. Right. I'm going to opt for a two-minute exposure. I'll give you the tip in a second. ISO 100, F18, and eighth of a second. That's perfect. That relates to a two-minute exposure. I'm going to drop that 10-stop filter on. From the same location, let me offer you a couple of tips. Your first one is based around your polarizer. Now, ordinarily, you place a polarizer on your camera and turn it to take the sheen off the water, which would render this water nice and dark. But there is an alternative. On a two-minute exposure, for instance, we're going to flatten this water out and turn it into an ice skating ring. And it looks tremendous. But now revisit the shot and turn your polarizer, almost deactivate your polarizer on the water. You could even remove your polarizer at this point and then retake that same two minute exposure and look at the difference. Another great tip, assuming that you've taken a long exposure like I have today as well. Don't move your camera, keep the composition exactly the same. Remove your 10 stop filter, focus into the sky and take a sped up shot. And that'll give you a couple of options. Option number one is you can replace the sky if you didn't like the sky over a two minute exposure. And option number two, which is more prevalent on a day like today, because it's windy. So the trees and the bushes are blowing all over the place over a two minute exposure can look quite nasty. So therefore we could just choose to swap over the bushes and the tree or the bushes, the tree and the sky. When I walk away, I like to do a bit of everything so I can give myself options because, as I always say, I won't know if collectively this is a good shot today, but I'll know it tomorrow in the cold light of day when I'm sat on my large screen. Grab yourself loads of options, but if you've never tried the polarizer trick, give it a whirl. Another interesting alternative coming up from the area where everybody shoots. Don't worry if there's lots of people around by the way, because when you come up here and go down there, you'll be out of their way, so don't worry about it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna head across there. And basically we're gonna utilize not the, the rapids here, but the small area just down there as foreground interest and possibly slightly higher up as well. But let's do that one first and see what you think. I'm in and amongst it all, so it might be very noisy. I apologize about that. Now, this is really interesting because this is just a tiny little waterfall, but because I'm so close to it, I'm gonna make it look huge and really dynamic in the image. We've got the waterfall dropping down on the bottom left-hand side of the frame with a little trickle of water popping in from the right, just saying hello. Then moving up through the portrait orientation shot, we've got a beautiful, 
birch tree in flower, nice and yellow on the right hand side and of course the buccal in the centre in the background. Symmetrically, bottom left, middle right and top left maybe, top middle, doesn't really matter, symmetrically it works perfect. I've given it the same treatment, I've removed the six top filter and I've taken some sped up shots as well which gives us the option for a better sky or an alternative sky but it also gives us the ability to stop or replace the bushes that have blurred over a longer exposure. Yeah, exactly the same. Mm, give yourself plenty of options. And there's quite a nice kick of light coming off the side of the buccal at the moment as well. So that also makes for an interesting background. Now there's so much to go at here in terms of foreground interest. So much, that's obviously where we've just shot just here. I mean, just following the river up there, up, 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 and you could just isolate. What we've done here is isolated this little tiny waterfall, but there are so many moving up here that you can just choose. As long as symmetrically it works, i.e. the buccal and this tree, as long as they sit right, you don't want to go up to about here and then have that tree sat right in the middle of the buccal, because that clearly won't work. Now, I've got a couple of other alternative locations moving slightly further in that direction. A lot quieter now, isn't it? Just moving up ever so slightly, and this will be water height and weather dependent. But literally 20 yards away from the main shot, there is a fairly sizable pool. And when the water is flat calm, you'll get an amazing reflection of the buccal in the background. Oh, look at that light in the buccal. I'm not sure if this camera will pick it up. So what we're looking at now is a gorgeous reflection from the water there of the buccal up there. So the foreground interest is the buccal itself in the reflection. So this is the water here. And without stating the obvious, that's the buccal there. So portrait orientation, get your camera really low down onto the water's edge here, as low as you possibly can go, as, le as low as you dare go. Uh, and like I say, on a flat cam day, you'll get a stunning reflection of the buccal. I mean, look at that. That's something else at the moment. Following the river up ever so slightly. Now again, as always, this is weather and water height dependent. You can't do it now, but after a dump of rain, if you're here shortly after a dump of rain, there'll be, or there's likely to be a deluge of water gushing down this river. As you wander up, just around the corner there, only a minute or so away from where I am now, then there are one or two large boulders that will stand proud above whatever rushing water is going by. And isolate one of those rocks again, we're just looking for foreground interest to photograph the buccal. That's all, and that's quite interesting. I can't give you that as an example now because the water height isn't right for that particular shot. If you venture just another five minutes up the river, follow the river up and you'll find an old building there. And that old building is quite useful, quite interesting as well for foreground interest. It used to be shot quite a bit, but the car park that's right next to it has now closed for emergency purposes only. I think they use it for a helipad, but you still can either park fairly close to it or it's a five minute walk. That's all it is. Just a five minute walk up and around. Again, it's a great alternative shot from this here. But I mean, ultimately, we're just photographing the buccal. That's all we're doing. We're just looking for something in the foreground to complement it. Talking of which, what I'm now going to do, and I'll do this very briefly for you guys. I'm not gonna record me wandering around everywhere, but I'm very quickly gonna take a five minute walk away from here, no more than five minutes. So if you turn up and if it's busy or if you've been here and you photographed it to death, then just go for a walk up to five minutes, probably even two minutes from here. And there are some amazing alternative images that you can capture.
Right, that's it. That's this video over and done with. One thing I'd like you to do though is bear in mind that I'm not here at the the right time in theory, the right time for a shot. The buccal is at sunrise. It's mid-afternoon now, so if you do like any of the pictures, then also another takeaway from this video is don't just restrict yourself to the times that everybody tells you is the right time. Okay. So here, it's meant to be sunrise, but I've taken some amazing shots. In actual fact, the best shot that I've ever taken from here was at sunset. Hmm, bit of a strange one, but there you go. Oh, it's lighting up now, look at that, hang on. I stopped filming. I mean, this is another great example. Look, right. I'll show you that now. I'll pop this in this video so you guys can see. I meant to be doing an ending at the end of the day and the light is just kicking off up there i mean look at that light on there that is just phenomenal look at that so going back to this video it's important that you do photograph the honeypot locations photograph the honeypot locations they're honeypot locations for a reason but once you photograph them try your best to make it your own as long as the images are balanced, as long as compositionally wise they work, symmetrically they work, then just have some fun and play. That's all you need to do like I've done today. Some of these pictures you might like, some of them you might not. And honestly, I've taken loads of pictures from around here and I could go off and go off and go off. It's just an incredible, incredible spot. So as always, if you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor, I hate to say it, but give that like button a bit of a nudge and subscribe if you're new here and you wanna find your way back. <laughs>